What's up guys, Rob here from Decoded. Since my last video was quite simple, I wanted to up the bar a little and tackle some more advanced problems in Blender. I found this image on Pixabay and I thought the statues, books and the plant would make for a very interesting challenge. So I loaded the whole thing into FSpy, got the camera data and started the modeling process. This is quite a complex scene, so you'll have to forgive me for skipping some of the more mundane stuff. But the basic scene was just blocked out in the usual manner, extruding and cutting basic geometry so that it aligns with the photograph. For the painting on the wall, I created a quick node setup that would replicate the texture of the canvas. I used a wave texture node with a low randomness value that would create a sort of grid pattern. Then I fed that into an inverted bump node, which created a really nice texture. It's probably not going to show up in the final render, I knew that when I made it, but it's a nice little touch and it's very simple to do. I created a smooth cream coloured material, then I added a gradient node into the editor. I adjusted the mapping information of the gradient node until it pointed in the right direction. And then I used a colour ramp just to tweak exactly where the gradient would end. This gradient was then used to drive the transmission value of a principal shader, which basically would make the bottom of the lamp more see-through than the top. I added a point lamp into the scene just to quickly test that out. For the floor, I thought it would look better if I physically modelled out each floorboard rather than just slapping a texture on a plane. I created a node setup to randomise the mapping location of the texture of each floorboard so that no floorboard would look exactly like any of the others. If you don't know how to do that, then you're in luck. I have a video covering that exact topic, I'll leave a link to that in the description. To add even more variation to the floorboards, I mixed in a random colour to each one using a colour ramp and the mix RGB nodes. The clock was really simple, just basic shapes moved into place. The body was a cylinder with the face extruded in. I used another cylinder and half a sphere to create the bells on top. I was careful when I moved the bells to only do it in edit mode so that the origin point stayed in the middle of the clock so I could then mirror it later. I added a shiny purple material for the actual clock itself and then I slapped the mirror modifier on and I added the feet. The hands of the clock were just planes with a few loop cuts. I used proportional editing to make a nice curve shape out of them, then I rotated them and moved them into place. At this point, I decided it would be a good idea to work on the lighting a bit more, in order to check the materials and make sure they look okay. I added a point lamp into the scene and duplicated it three times. I added an IES light texture to the emission so that it would look like a real downlight bulb. If you've never used IES lighting profiles before, I also have a video on those two. The cable for the lamp was just a curved path with some thickness added to it in the options panel. I moved it into place trying to avoid making it look like it was too staged. I find that CG wires often look really unnatural and it's important that you take care when you're placing them. The books were really simple geometry. I created three variations, small, medium and large. Just like the floorboards, I used a node setup that would randomly pick a colour for each duplicate. In Photoshop, I created some book tiles on an image with the transparency enabled. I then created multiple UV maps for the book, one for each tile. I created a separate material node for the tiles and I used the image to drive the mix node. Blender doesn't have a tool to automatically select a random UV map for a material, so I had to create one. I didn't want to spend a lot of time doing this, so it's a bit quick and dirty, but it does work. If you duplicate the book, Blender gives it a random colour and a random tile. I then used another node system, which would randomise the colour of the tile as well. This whole thing was a bit of an experiment for me and I was surprised that it worked as well as it did. With that material set up, I went around the scene just populating all the shelves with books. I've got to be honest, I originally planned to not even include this statue in the render because I think it's tacky and awful. 
but it didn't look right without it in the scene and I couldn't think what else to put there. So I figured if I can do it very, very simply, then I'll leave it in. If not, then I'll figure something else out. That was my compromise to myself. The least possible effort method that I could think to do it was to just trace out the basic shape using extruding. Once I had that, I extruded it out so it was a 3D object, remeshed it and took it into the sculpt tools. This is not how I'd normally recommend you create an asset, but it worked well enough for something that's really small in the final render. The Cortana sword was super simple as well. It's just a cylinder which I've extruded and moved into the right shape using some proportional editing. The only interesting part here was the hilt. I used a wave texture and plugged it into the bump node to create the appearance of like a wrapped handle. I used basic sculpting techniques to create the plant. To be honest, I don't have a lot of experience with sculpting in Blender, or sculpting in general for that matter. Most of the sculpting I've ever done was in Sculptress, 3D Coat or Mudbox, so I've only ever used Blender's tools a handful of times for this. However, the new sculpting tools look so good, I thought it was the perfect time to start transitioning it over and using Blender as my main sculpting platform. If you haven't seen the new sculpting tools being developed by Pablo de Barro, I suggest you check those out. He's doing some fantastic work developing tools that are going to take Blender sculpting power to the next level. Once the sculpting was done, I added a plane to the scene and gave it a leaf texture which I downloaded off the internet. The texture also came with an alpha map for transparency so each plane would actually look like a leaf. Then I duplicated that plane a handful of times and grouped it together to make like a bunch of leaves. Once I had a bunch of leaves in place, I used a hair particle system to distribute that around a half sphere shape. Then it was just a case of hiding the emission object from the render and playing around with the various hair particle settings. I wish I had more time to finish the plant, but I was fairly pleased with how it looked in the end. It wasn't too close to the photograph, but it looked pretty nice overall. The toy car was another late addition to the scene. Like the statue of the cat, I originally planned to leave it out of the render entirely. However, the strong downlight of the lamps really highlights that part of the image. It makes it a bit of a focal point. It would look weird to have nothing in that part of the image, so I decided to bite the bullet and start modelling the car anyway. To be honest, the car was just about the laziest thing I've ever modelled in my life. It was just a modified cylinder with a few wheels stuck on the side. The materials were incredibly basic too. They were like shiny principal BSDF shaders with no other complexity or any detail added to them. In the past, I've always had a bad habit of overworking my renders, adding in too much detail where it isn't needed, spending countless hours modeling and texturing fine details that won't even show in the render. I'm starting to get out of that habit now and I'm trying to keep things as basic as possible when I can. For the lighting, I created a basic window shape and I turned down the strength of the HDRI until it was almost dark. I created a point light outside and then another point light which would go just above the camera. The point light that's outside is stronger, it provides most of the light for the scene. The other light is basically just a fill light. It's very weak and it just fills in some of the shadowed areas. I used a medium high contrast setting, set blender to 500 samples and hit the render button. There was no compositing in Blender apart from setting up the denoising node. I was pretty happy with the raw render, but I took it into Photoshop for some final tweaks. For comparison, here is the real photograph, and here is mine. So I got pretty close overall, especially as I wasn't aiming for a 100% exact replica. I'll leave links to all the things I've mentioned in this video in the description, including my Patreon where I'll upload the blend file of this scene. You'll also find the like and subscribe buttons down there, so you may as well hit those too. Thanks for watching this video guys, I'll see you next time.